is Tawi Tawi Bulletin. Here we'll be talking about the latest news, issues, and happenings within the province of Tawi Tawi. So today is October 22, 2021, and here are the latest happenings within the province. The provincial governor to the province of Tawi Tawi together with the vice governor and other BARM officials have arrived from the four-day trade and investment study trip to the neighboring state of Sabah, East Malaysia, late last week. The program, which was hosted by Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East Asian Growth Area, or BIMPEAGA, or BMEGA, was set to kickstart dialogues for economic and inter-border partnerships, as well as to boost friendly trade relations between the province. So during the four-day trip, which started from October 11 to October 14, the delegation, which was led by the provincial governor Ismail Mang Sali, the provincial vice governor Tati Kong Ahaja, deputy minister for the Ministry of Interior and Local Government Benjamin Loong, and other BARM officials and stakeholders have also visited a number of business enterprises and industrial sites in Kota Kinabalu as part of a set of business tours organized by Invest Sabah. The purpose of the tour is to provide benchmarks and insights on networking of Sabah's people-centered economic development that the province could use as a guide as we establish and strengthen our socio-economic development programs. Later that week, the group flew to Lahadatu to the state-established Palm Oil Industry Cluster or POIC to discuss possible opportunities for trade and investments. Among the proposals that were discussed was the establishment of direct air and sea transportation lines between Lahadatu and strategic areas in the province of Tawi-Tawi. If proper air and sea routes could be established, it would greatly boost trade and investment opportunities as well as tourism for the state of Sabah as well as the province of Tawi-Tawi. In a television interview with Berita Pagi, POIC Sabah Chairman Datu Yong Tech Lee said that talks are underway of a potential trade agreement where the province of Tawi-Tawi shall provide raw produce of seaweed and tuna to be processed in Lahadatu for export to other countries and for home consumption in Sabah and Tawi-Tawi. The province, which is dubbed the nation's seaweed capital, produces around 40% of seaweed which are then processed in Zamboanga City and General Santos. Now, if an agreement could be reached and trade routes established, sending our seaweed and tuna produce would be geographically closer. And with good trade relations with Bimega member countries, the market for the export goods would be much more diverse. The provincial governor, upon arriving from the four-day business trip, has expressed optimism in the success of the trade and investment study mission. And there are also talks with other business tours in other Bimega countries. If preparations have been finalized, a delegation from the province is scheduled to visit Indonesia by next month. The province of Tawi-Tawi has conducted a series of Islamic symposiums from October 16 to 21 at the Masjid Rayat Sin Tawi-Tawi or Central Mosque. Around 25 lectures on the life of the Prophet Muhammad were given by 14 scholars from Basilan, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, and Zamboanga City. The Islamic symposium titled Pagbuhi sin pagtumtum, hasal sila sin pagpabata ha Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam aims to serve as a reminder on living a good Muslim life. The symposium is also timely since it is this month that parts of the Muslim world celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad also known as Baulid or Mauludin Nabi which is commemorated by majority of the Muslim world on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, the third month of the Islamic calendar. Tawi-Tawi, which majority of its residents are Sunni Muslims, have participated in the symposium with a festive air. Food and drinks were served to those who participated in the lectures as hundreds sat to listen to the sermons. Safety health protocols were also being enforced by the provincial government, giving out free face masks to the guests and reminding them to observe social distancing and wear their mask at all times inside the grounds. The visiting scholars were facilitated by Habib Sadiq Sali, the president of the SR Mosque in Zamboanga City, as well as the president of SR Languyan Mining Corporation. The Integrated Provincial Health Office or IPHO Tawi-Tawi is celebrating its 47th founding anniversary this week. 
And to commemorate the event, the IPHO Tawi-Tawi, together with the Ministry of Health, the provincial government, and the World Surgical Foundation in the Philippines shall conduct a free surgical operation program, dubbed Libre Pag Opera, from November 22 to 27, 2021, at the Datu Halun Sakilan Memorial Hospital. During the six-day affair, specialists from the World Surgical Foundation in the Philippines, based in Manila, would be sending a team of doctors to help with the medical operations. The processes are free of charge as well as medicines for the patients. The cost for the medical mission shall be shouldered by the medical assistance provided by the Ministry of Social Services and Development, or MSSD, the BARM Chief Minister Ahud Ebrahim, Medical Assistance for Indigent Patients Program, MAIP, the Provincial Governor, Ismael Sali, Member of Parliament, Al Sayed Sali, and Congressman Rashidin Matba. The list of operations available for the free surgical mission is as follows. The Libre Opera program is from November 22 to 27 and viewers in the province who are watching now can register at the IPHO Outpatient Department and at your respective RHU or Barangay Health Centers. The Provincial Governor to the Province of Tawi-Tawi, Governor Ismael Sali together with Member of Parliament al Said Sali and the Provincial Government hosted the first Salawat Badar Ashrakal and Asmaul Husna Exposition in the province last October 20-21 to at the Masjid Rayat Grounds. Around 18 groups have joined the competition from different provincial local government sectors, local government sectors, BARM offices, and Jama'as in the province where the winner of the exposition is set to receive cash prizes sponsored by the province. The criteria for judging is based on the correct pronunciation, which is 30%, blending and synchronization, 25%, appropriateness of the outfit, 20%, costume, 20%, and audience impact of 5%. The two-day exposition, which started at 8 p.m. until midnight, had the participants showcasing their talents as well as some groups giving their own symbolic interpretation on the practice of Salawat, which is also part of the festivities being practiced by majority of Tawi-Tawians in celebrating Mauludin Nabi or the Prophet Muhammad's birthday. The grand prize of 750,000 pesos was awarded to the SPX official team and runners-up to the competition have received cash prizes as well. The first runner-up for the event was awarded to SP Sectoral Team or Team Bajau with 550,000 pesos. Second runner-up is the Office of the Vice Governor with 450,000 pesos. Third runner-up, Team Arahman, which is LGU Languyan with 400,000 pesos. Fourth runner-up was given to four groups, taking the price of 300,000 pesos each. Five groups landed fifth place with 200,000 pesos plus 50,000 for each group. And the sixth place was awarded to the rest of the competitors with 100,000 pesos plus 50,000 pesos for each group. In the closing message by the governor, he thanked everyone for participating in the first exposition as well as the province-sponsored symposium and has promised that God willing, these religious programs would become an annual event. Lastly, we shall be bringing you COVID updates in the province of Tawi-Tawi. As per the IATF Tawi-Tawi COVID-19 Situational Report dated October 17 to 22, the province has a total of six new cases, bringing the total active cases in the province to 13. And out of this, six cases are admitted in the hospital with one severe case. The province has reported zero COVID cases from July and August and has received reports from hospital-based tests of COVID patients by mid-September which started with three COVID cases and that has now reached to 13. The provincial IATF has advised LGUs to enforce the minimum safety health protocols and local law enforcement units have been patrolling areas and giving free face masks to the public. Now moving on to the vaccination program, 
around 66,346 doses have been administered in the province of Tawi-Tawi, where 23,223 have finished their first dose and 43,123 have been fully vaccinated. Vaccination is still underway and it is advised to look up on the Kasehatan Sinpamaranan Face Tawi Tawi Facebook page to check the schedules of vaccination centers in your areas. In line with the recent re-emergence of COVID cases within the province, the Interagency Task Force COVID-19 Tawi-Tawi has put out a official advisory that would take effect on November 1, 2021, where all inbound passengers to Tawi-Tawi shall be required to present their genuine vaccination card of COVID-19 vaccines together with the RT-PCR negative test results. Children below 12 years old are exempted from the rule provided that they are traveling with vaccinated and negatively tested adults. Inbound travelers who have taken the first dose of the vaccine can enter the province but shall undergo 10 days of quarantine and will have to complete their second dose in the province. Travelers with falsified documents shall be dealt with accordingly and shall undergo 14-day quarantine in the LGU quarantine facility. The IATF Tawi-Tawi is advising everyone to stay at home and observe the health protocols. So that's the latest news we have in this week's episode of Tawi-Tawi Bulletin. We shall see you next Friday for another Tawi-Tawi Bulletin update. Observe the safety health protocols. Magsukul toongan and I'll see you guys in the next video.